Okay, so here's it mostly done. Got an oven here, though um, it does load down the power quite a lot. I suspect at least the two or three volt drop when it's on. I haven't measured it. But uh, yeah, the, the extension cable, this cable, this cable, this cable, they all get warm. So it's drawing a thousand watts. So in the future, I might replace these with thicker cable because this is like 18 gauge wire or something, which is miserable. I might go up to like 10 gauge, but I have to run that off to the garage. And I can't tap the breaker, so it's at the run to an outlet, but it should work. So fume hood, uh, the silicone is cured. So there you go works. I have the, the um, controller mounted on the side here. Speed. And max. So, bug. Dead. <laughs> uh, the only concern I have being outside is termites, because the few modes wood, they're going to eat it. But hopefully it's not an issue, because the wood is treated. It's also fire retardant. So, that should be fine. I'm going to leave this running for a bit of ventilation. So in here, of course, just the average stuff, hot plate, trays, vacuum and water have been hooked up. I've moved my water cooler outside. Oven, of course, uh, oil bath, uh, some other stuff. A uh, rotary pump, the paint bucket water supply, uh, the aspirator vacuum pump, which um, probably not the best place. A sink, runs off the water here. We have a pile of random garbage. So. First thing, this miscellaneous stuff, I'll probably put some other stuff in here, that oil bath maybe, though I'm most likely going to use that oil bath and just use this as a general purpose boral silicate thing. So, close this down. And one below. Uh, accessories, clamps, bosses, uh, a lab jack, mantle, and a hot plate. And here is Erlemeyer's and beakers and other sort of equipment and also quartz tubes. Look at this nice thing I bought. I have two of these. Make a tube furnace out of it. Or a larger tube furnace. Though it is quite short to be honest. I might get a meter long one instead. And just general chemicals, bicarb, HCl, sulfuric, sodium hydroxide, calcium carbonate, yeah, I know, acid base is stored together. I don't care if they leak, they're gonna neutralize each other anyways. So over here, we have a uh, general glassware, AKA pretty much everything except flasks. So we have Friedrich's condenser, Moore condenser, Dimroth condenser, short path, uh, receiver, set funnel, even 250 milliliter powder addition funnel. These are expensive. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Probably inert gas chemistry, really. Uh, anything that needs inert atmospheres, but yeah. I mostly bought just to flex on people. So, carefully close this. Under here is the flasks round bottom. So I have a two liter. I'm surprised this even fits. It barely fits. Uh, two one liter, uh, three neck liter, uh, four neck, um, 250, or 250 mil, 250, three neck, three, uh, three neck, 500, 500, all that kind of stuff. You can see it barely fits. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put here yet. Oh, I'm also not moving most of the chemicals outside because, frankly, they're stored inside and that has better temperature control anyways. So, yeah, light bulbs tied from ceiling. I have to rotate this around or instead buy PVC pipe and drill holes in it for a fire suppression system. Um... I'm not sure if I actually will do that. Uh, depends. Either way. So yeah, flooring will actually be run in this fume hood. Again, it's wood, but I don't care. It's fire retardant. It's been treated. And also, this is like less than 10 milliliters of gas per minute. This is like almost nothing. So it's not really anything to worry about. Like, it's not a lot of fluorine being generated. And this is considering the fact that the original paper called for a 30 centimeter tall V cell. I am not building something like that large. I'm building something more like two hand lengths large, like around a foot, a foot and a half maybe. So 
that one makes a liter per hour, so roughly 20 milliliters of gas per minute. No, mine scale down considerably, so it's gonna be even less than 10 milliliters of gas per hour. So yeah, also, I'm not gonna store the fluorine, I'm not insane, I'm not gonna pump it into a cylinder, that's a dumb idea. But yeah, that's pretty much the new lab. Oh, of course, fan, water. I dropped my Dreschel bottle today and uh, it broke, I know. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this will stand in the weather. I mean, I have it connected up. The only concern is rain, because uh, I, even though I tried to bend that before, it, the rain always accumulates, so I end up just poking a hole in the tarp. So hopefully that water is not gonna affect anything. If it does, then I'm gonna have to make some sort of drainage system. That would be a good source of water though for my deuterium refiner, which I plan to build at some point. Yes, a deuterium refinery. <laughs> it's gonna be a self contained machine that's powered by solar and the, the waste hydrogen gas that's you know usually discarded by burning or storing it somewhere i'm going to be recovering that wasted energy using a fuel cell so i'm going to feed the oxygen and hydrogen in and that will recover my electricity it charges the battery the battery continues to electrolyze the water and that will leave me with pure deuterium oxide in that or at least very close purity then i'll have to run distillations and that kind of stuff maybe ion exchange and all that now, of course, the better method would be a hydrogen sulfide method, but I'm not really wanting to deal with high pressure hydrogen sulfide and um, super, um, like, superheated water in steel, like, literal steel pump plumbing parts. It's gonna dissolve it. So I'm not gonna deal with um, hydrogen sulfide method. I'm just gonna use electrolysis because it's rather convenient. But yeah, that's the plan. Water, electrolysis, solar power, and recover the energy. And it's going to be somewhere in this lab, maybe outside even. I might build a second shed. But yeah, that, that's just a few ideas. I want to get into deuterium chemistry because there's some interesting stuff. For example, octadeuterocubane. Funnily enough, the synthesis is literally just start out with deuterated cyclopentanone and use deuterated ethylene glycol. But yeah, that's the idea. Ooh, it's melted. But yeah, here's the new lab. And um, we're going to get, well, first thing mosquito first thing i'm gonna do is probably synthesize ddt or deet instead uh deet is a mosquito repellent i make my i might make that instead of ddt because ddt um it's not really toxic to humans but i don't think the epa would be happy with me vaporizing it in this lab and spreading it everywhere so i don't know ddt maybe for fun but i'm not going to use it like actually spray it spray down the lab in it because that would be irresponsible Deed's uh, repellent, however, probably will do that. But yeah, 